we were talking about the idea we wanted to deal with this subject, the climate crisis, which is so overwhelming and it's arguably the greatest threat to life in the history of mankind. And we just felt like you can get, it, that can almost be like a, an animal attacking you. It can just be overwhelming. But if you're able to laugh, that means you have some distance. And I, I actually think that's really important. You can feel urgency and you can feel sadness and you can feel loss while also having a sense of humor. And that was really the intention with this movie after the crazy last five, 10 years we've all had across the planet was that, God, wouldn't it be nice to laugh at some of this and feel the other feelings? So that. That was kind of the approach, because I think we get hit with sort of the thumping doomsday uh, talk quite a bit, which, by the way, is totally legit when it comes to climate change. But uh, I did think it was important that that people be allowed to laugh and have some distance. It's also a great unifier, too. You can't really fake laughter. It's not a political thing. They've tried, but it never really works whenever you try and fake that. So, yeah, that was kind of the thinking behind it. The thing that was like beautiful about this movie, what it, it highlighted just how special collaboration is for me because we're in the middle of a pandemic, there's no vaccine, and we all come at that to time. The, at that time. At that time. Yeah. There is definitely a vaccine now and everyone should be uh, getting it. But at that time there was no vaccine. And we all had to wear crazy masks and stay away and have zones and everything. But everyone did it and found a way to be creative in a way that was like genuinely moving and touching. And for me, I feel like the whole time I've been working in movies or theater or TV or whatever, that's the thing that I love the most. And, uh, and seeing this group do that was just like one of the more special experiences I've ever had. I met up with uh, Nick Patel and um, he played me the song and I immediately was like, holy shit. <laughs> like this is, where do I fit? Do you even need me? Like, how, how do I approach this? And um, he had something written for me and we tried that but it just wasn't working. And I was just like, maybe it'd be better if I approach this, like doing my, my flavor and, and kind of taking it, taking that approach. And then another thing was really like, okay, this is not like, um, this is not me writing a song from the Kid Cudi perspective. This is from DJ Cello's perspective. Mm -hmm. And they just linked back up. So he's pretty much just like, kind of confessing and expressing his love to her and you know kind of he's forgetting about the the importance of the song in general and just kind of just like oh i'm just happy to be with my baby you know so i kind of just took this approach of just like you're on the stage with this girl you're making this love song you're well, not a love song but you're making this song with the love of your life and it's it's your time to you guys just had a huge fallout and everyone around the world knew about it and now you guys are coming together. So it was kind of like this, kind of like the, the reunion moment for me, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, like it, it, was, it was intense at first because Ariana is such an incredible artist and you know, um, her vocal performance is just like stellar, you know, it's like her voice is just amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure everybody can agree. Mm -hmm. um, 100%, yeah. So, uh, I just you know, uh, <laughs> 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 but like, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just really happy that we were able to figure it out and it, it worked, man. I'm really proud of it. I'll just start right at the gate and say, he is an absolute genius, this young man, this friend of mine. <clears throat> his, his ability to improvise and take control of a scene and have the narrative be shifted in the most amazing, colorful ways is, uh, is, uh, is a sight to witness and something truly re remarkable to experience. He's absolutely a genius. Mm -hmm. Love to work with him on, on 100 more films. Amen. I've worked with now pretty much all the best actors in the world a lot of whom are up here right now. 
Um, and there's been no more loyal friend or anything I've ever made in show business. And then aside from that, put all those feelings aside, the way, what you see when they yell action and what he does, truly, no disrespect to anyone, nothing I've ever seen like it. Mm -hmm. That's all I got to say. Mm -hmm. Like, hands down. Mm -hmm. This is uh, an issue where everyone feels ultimately like, what, what, what kind of difference can we make? Mm -hmm. What can we contribute to this cause? And Adam really cracked the code with this, with this narrative. I mean, there's so many uh, comparisons that we can make to the climate crisis with this storyline. And, you know, as a whole, I think it's just, it's probably the most important issue all of us could be talking about on a regular basis. And it takes artists like this to change the narrative, you know, mm -hmm. to create conversation. And uh, like, I, I, just an honor to be a part of it, really. There's just no way it's ever going to happen, you know, but, but it's just that glimmer of the, the human dream where we, we hope something good yes. is going to happen, even though, even though we know something bad is. And that's, that's sort of the, the kernel of truth of this, is that we push this information away. Smart people, people who don't have scientific background, everyone pushes it away because it's just, uh, It's just too painful Yeah, sometimes. it's too painful. Yeah. And I said to Adam when we first talked about promoting it, you know, you got to give people three things that they can do so they don't want to kill themselves at the end, you know, because it would be great to have three things if it were only that simple. But one of them is obviously to vote for people who believe and understand the imminence of this threat to all of our lives, rich people, Poor people, everybody, everything flows from this. Every, every issue of injustice, inequity, everything. If we don't survive, none of it matters. I actually made a couple of phone calls to uh, a couple of people who are on morning shows right now and that I admire. Joe Scarborough is one and uh, Michael Strahan is the other. So I asked them, I actually sent them uh, part of the script. I said, why don't you read this and send it back to me on, on your iPhone, just tape it. And they did, and I was like, okay, I got some bits here, I got some bits there, but those guys are, are professional journalists. I mean, I, I mean, this guy is, he's, he's, the guy I played is not that. So it was, it was, uh, they were very helpful in, in pulling that off and helping me to pull that off.